Hey everybody, welcome to Beaming Notes and today we're going to look at the critical analysis of the poem Aunt Jennifer's Tigers, a poem by Adrian Rich. Critical analysis. The formalism of Aunt Jennifer's Tigers hides the more troubling features of the poem and aids the theme of Aunt Jennifer's ordeals in marriage to the more poetic subject of the divine existence of art. The first verse of the poem defines the fearless tigers Aunt Jennifer creates in Needlepoint, but their freedom and dignity is contrasted in the second verse to the restrictions of marriage, symbolized by the wedding band that weighs down Aunt Jennifer's fingers as she sews. Another major criticism is that the themes are resolved in the final third verse, even death will not free Aunt Jennifer from her ordeals but the tigers she has created will continue to appear proud and unafraid. It has been detected that uncle causes Aunt Jennifer anxiety and that he's dominating her through his mastery. Therefore, uncle is unfair. Yet, uncle is identical with Aunt Jennifer's wedding ring. It is not clear whether the speaker is trying to make clear that marriage is cruel. The first line of the second stanza states that Aunt Jennifer is occupied with wool. Wool is a material that often comes from sheep. Sheep is a term which is frequently used to describe people who are conventional or traditional. Marriage itself is a resolution and a tradition. Perhaps Aunt Jennifer is anxiety-ridden because of her choice to be old-fashioned and get married into a domineering association. The poem has received wide critical appreciation. Adrian Rich's poem, Aunt Jennifer's Tigers, is a poem of struggle. The conflict is what takes place within Aunt Jennifer, the craving to break away from the society in which she lives. The poem is convincing because of the struggle between what Jennifer wishes her life to be and what it really is. The narrator occupies a reader with a description. Tigers prance across the screen and sets this image in contrast to the image of Aunt Jennifer's fingers with the massive weight of Uncle's wedding band. There's a direct link between revolt and repression, between the individual and the social, between the personal and the political. This is also the beginning of Rich's life, long subject of feminism. This poem cries out, a determination of Aunt Jennifer to throw off the destruction of social and political chains which held women in their homes and tied to husbands they no longer wish to serve. Poetic Devices The poetic devices used in this poem are mainly alliteration, end rhyme and couplet. Sound devices add sparkle and interest to poetry allowing a rhythm to form about words making the reading memorable. Alliteration, rhyme in couplets and end rhyme are the most common forms of poetic devices found in the poem Aunt Jennifer's Tigers by Adrian Rich. Alliteration is a repetition of consonant sounds at the beginning of the words. An example of alliteration is Aunt Jennifer's fingers fluttering through her wool. The repeated F sounds in fingers fluttering make the poem pleasant to read aloud as the recurrent consonant sounds allow the words to appear perhaps spirited, continuing the mood from the first stanza. Rhyme can be defined as the occurrence of similar or identical sounds at the ends of two or more words. An example of rhyme would be Aunt Jennifer's tigers prance across a screen bright topaz denizens of a world of green. The rhyme is also set up in the words screen and green as they share similar sounds e. Aunt Jennifer's Tigers has a non-stop rhyme pattern at the end of each line, also known as end rhyme, adding a rhythm that continues throughout the piece. An end rhyme is a rhyme that occurs at the ends of the lines. For instance, Aunt Jennifer's tigers prance across a screen, bright topaz denizens of a world of green. They do not fear the men beneath the tree. They pace in sleek chivalric certainty. 
Screen, green, tree and certainty all have similar sounds at the end of each line. This end rhyme adds a playful rhythm continuing the melody of the first stanza. A couplet is a rhymed pair of lines. Some examples are they do not fear the men beneath the tree, they pace in sleek chivalric certainty. Every line in the poem Aunt Jennifer's Tigers has its place to a couplet. Couplets are more related to the form of the poem. However, they also have a relationship with rhyme. Yet again, the continuous couplets thus continuous rhyme add a free and a playful rhythm which praises Adrian Rich's theme. Solved Questions What is a poet's concept of marriage? According to the poet, marriage is unequal due to male domination and inequality. The woman at the center of the poem, Aunt Jennifer, is an anxious and fearful wife. She lacks inner conviction or certainty, unlike the tiger she portrays. Aunt Jennifer has become proficient in her life. She lives a life of disparity. She is so nervous that her fingers flutter through the wool she is using in her drapery or panel. The poet depicts the marriage of Aunt Jennifer as an unhappy one for her. Jennifer feels the problem of duty and obedience. This is revealed by the representation of the wedding ring that she wears. It is pronounced as her husband's property, uncle's wedding band. It sits cripplingly on her hand because he dominates her life. Her life with her spouse is described as a life of ordeals. It is shown that Jennifer is horrified in her marriage. Her husband may be violent to her than the tiger she creates in her artwork. For that reason, the poem provides a negative picture of marriage. The poem is probably saying that the uncle or husband is performing like a tiger and the tigers are chivalric like the husband should be. Each world is the opposite of what it should be. How does the poet compare the real world and the world of art? In the poem, the world of art is depicted as happier than the real world. Aunt Jennifer's hobby is making designs and pictures from wool. The creatures she places there are free and proud, the opposite to herself. She is ringed or mastered in marriage and as a result, she is not free but controlled. It looks as if that she creates a happier looking world than the one she lives in. She makes accurate and brightly colored pictures like the sharp yellow tigers of the poem visualized against a green background. These bright complementary colors are probably much brighter than Jennifer's everyday world. Her imaginative work will live on even after she dies as, according to the poet, her tigers will go on prancing. The figures she creates are durable and happier than she is. They are proud and prance about contrasting their creator who is nervous and fears her husband. The imaginary tigers produced by Aunt Jennifer live a kind of proud and free life that she can only dream about. It is a chivalric world, one where gentlemen treat women with great respect. Yet, this is also a false world as real tigers live out a battle for the existence of the fittest, where the strongest take over. Perhaps Aunt Jennifer practices art as an emission from her troubles. In her artwork, Jennifer imagines the kind of life she would have been keen on. In the poem Aunt Jennifer's Tigers by Adrian Rich, what do the tigers signify? Aunt Jennifer sews on a drapery which has beautiful topaz tigers romping across the top of the material. The tiger's strength displays that they are fearless and free. There are men inferior to the tigers that the cats ignore. They look like they have no fear of the hunters. The representation of the scene specifies that men could hurt the tigers with their weapons. However, the tigers show contempt for the men. They are free. The tigers will still go on in finite. They'll romp across her needlework without any fear and with dignity. Unlike Aunt Jennifer, 
They do not fear the men below who watch and wonder about the tigers above. When aunt is dead, her frightened hands will lie bearing the weight of the exploitation of her spouse. How is Aunt Jennifer portrayed in this poem? Aunt Jennifer is less self-composed. Her fingers flutter or are nervous as she sews and even finds it hard to work her needle. The answer turns out to be clear when the poet with deadly imagery lets the reader know it is a figurative wedding band that Aunt Jennifer wears that affects her composure. Who will get the stitched panel or embroidery of the tigers after Aunt Jennifer's death? Aunt Jennifer and uncle are the primary people in this poem. She addresses the two main characters of aunt and uncle. How does the poem Aunt Jennifer's Tigers echo the subject of the enduring conquest of women's work and values? Aunt Jennifer, though she is mastered by an insulting husband, finds an artistic outlet in her needlework. The embroidered tigers advance proudly and without fear across the screen she designed. Through Aunt Jennifer's art, Adrian Rich recommends that women who are not able to live freely do triumph in some way because their imaginations cannot be seized or controlled. Aunt Jennifer is able to imagine and produce a world where men are nothing to fear and this artistic vision outlasts her small, terrified hands.